Welcome to Financial Perspectives, the podcast, where we cover timely topics related to the current economic environment and keep you up to date on investment news. We also provide insights on how investors can maintain a long-term perspective. Please stick around at the end for important disclosure information. More information about Foster Group can be found in our ADV brochure at fostergrp.com. So for many of us, March is the one time of year when we discover how many colleges and universities field basketball teams. There's always a few institutions who make the tournaments that I have not heard about, like Wagner and Longwood on the men's side, or maybe Norfolk State on the women's side. But I have filled out two brackets of 63 games, predicting which men's and women's team will survive and advance to the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and ultimately be this year's national champion. You know, at the end of the season and after all the conference championship tournaments, the tournament selection committee selects 66 teams to take part in the tournament. There's a lot of talk about the committee's decision on who gets in and what their seedings ought to be. But more important than who gets in the tournament is really the format of the tournament. This is a single elimination tournament of 66 teams, which virtually guarantees maximum uncertainty. You know, many professional sports have decided that this kind of madness may not be the best way to determine who is the best team or the best player. So they have teams play a series of games, so one fluky good night or bad night doesn't eliminate or advance the quote wrong team. Major League Baseball and NBA Basketball, they play five and seven game series to determine who will advance. Professional golf tournaments are 72 holes across four days. But in the NCAA tournaments, uncertainty and underdogs pulling off the impossible upset of a top-ranked team, well, that's a feature not a bug. The level of unpredictability is hard to grasp when we think about it. The closest to a perfect bracket in the history of NCAA brackets was submitted in 2019 when Greg Nigel was perfect through 49 games. Again this year, Warren Buffett will pay an employee $1 million per year for life if they pick all 48 first and second round games correctly. The NCAA publishes some fun facts about why there has never been a perfect bracket submitted. First, there are 9.2 quintillion, that's with a Q, possible permutations of how the tournament could go. Talk about your multiverse. A group of University of Hawaii researchers, they estimated there are about 7.5 quintillion grains of sand on the Earth. So imagine each grain of sand has a unique number. If I picked up one at random and asked you to guess which number I had, you would have a better chance at guessing that than randomly creating a perfect NCAA bracket. Or if sand is too hard to imagine, as of 2015, the best estimate for the number of trees on the earth was three trillion. If there were one acorn hidden in one of those three trillion trees somewhere on the earth, the odds of you correctly guessing which tree contains the acorn is actually three million times better than creating the perfect bracket by chance. (laughs) Those are some big odds. You know, two weeks ago, we talked about one of our five principles for successful investing, and that was embracing uncertainty. Most people don't like uncertainty, and we take pains to eliminate or at least reduce it. But in March, as we've seen, uncertainty is really what makes the NCAA tournament fun. It's exciting to watch and almost comically predictable in terms of busted brackets. The NCAA tourney, in a couple of ways, is built to maximize uncertainty because that is so entertaining. So what can we learn from the predictable uncertainty in these tournaments that can help us maybe as investors? Well, I think there are three observations that can keep us enjoying the entertaining uncertainty of the NCAA tournaments while avoiding the anxious uncertainty that can come from stock market unpredictability. Now, the first two have to do with our expectations. First, as we've seen, there is just no statistical likelihood of a perfect bracket, a perfect set of predictions. Well, the same is true for stock market predictions. If we think someone will perfectly predict the future, we will be continuously disappointed. That's not entertained. The second is like it. You know, upsets in the tournament and negative years in stock markets, they're both to be expected, though we can't predict exactly which year they will happen. Like the tournament, we know there will be upsets in general, but picking the exact games where those upsets will actually occur, well, that just seems impossible to do perfectly well. And third, a single elimination tournament and long-term stock market investing success are very, very different. 
we need to make our investment approach into as much of a multi-game series as possible to raise the probability of our success. Think of it like this. While any single game upset may seem improbable, the likelihood of there being upsets in each round of the NCAA tournament is almost a statistical certainty. Given the single elimination style of tournament, if we think on average that the higher seed has a 75% chance of winning, on average, in round one's 32 games, the probability of seven lower seeds winning, pulling off the upset, that's over 50%. That means we should expect around seven or more upsets on Thursday and Friday for the men and over the first weekend for the women as well. We actually saw 11 lower seeds win in the men's bracket this weekend and only one lower seed, Middle Tennessee, beat the odds in the women's bracket in the first round. Across the full tournaments of 63 games, given these same odds, we would expect 15 lower seeds to win if each higher seed has, again, on average, a 75% probability of winning. Now that's a lot of busted brackets and one reason why creating a perfect bracket is so hard. But what if instead of single elimination, the tournaments were made up of the best of 10 series? Now, admittedly, that's an unlikely scenario, but using the same odds of the favorite, having a 75% probability of winning any one game, now the number of expected upsets in the first round of 32 matchups shrinks to less than two in 100. In this tournament, a longer series, we might expect a first round upset once every two or three years instead of seven or 11 each year. Of course, this would extend March Madness well into the summer. Basketball fans would have to be a lot more patient to determine their national champion, but there would be far less unpredictability. And that is really the lesson for investors to draw from the NCAA tournament, patience is a virtue in investing. Single elimination produces a lot of upsets, while a longer series at best of seven or 10 or even 15 would produce far fewer upsets and likely to be a lot less entertaining. But do we really want investing to be entertaining, filled with uncertainty? As investors, when we look at single year returns, much less single month returns, we are acting like investing is a single elimination tournament. One upset, one negative year, and we've lost, or we think we've lost, but we don't have to play single elimination. If by loss or upset in investing, we mean a negative return, well, we can see that by thinking of investing as a series, we can drive the odds of losing way down. By playing a 15-year series with the stock market since 1945, there has never been an upset, never a 15-year period with a negative return. So go ahead and enjoy the uncertainty and the predictable madness of upsets that come with the NCAA basketball tournaments. But remember that while we need to embrace the uncertainty of year-to-year -year returns in global stock markets and interest rates, we do not have to make the mistake of playing our portfolio like a single elimination event. By putting the odds in our favor and understanding that our stock portfolio can have 15 or more years to win, we can avoid the predictable mistakes of thinking short-term and being disappointed with one or two losses along the way. Hey, you know, if you're an Iowa Hawkeye fan with an affinity for the women's team and Caitlin Clark and crew, this doesn't help you with this year's quest to get back to the Final Four. But it does make every tournament game exciting to watch. I'm recording this podcast the morning of March 25th, hours before tonight's second round game between the Hawks and West Virginia. And I'm hoping that seniors Clark, Martin, and Marshall have a few more games together. As they say, go Hawks! And go Cyclones too. Also, remember as we go forward here that educated optimism is an antidote for anxious uncertainty, and it can be of great help in enabling investors to embrace the uncertainty that is with us all the time. We hope these presentations contribute to you becoming an educated and prepared optimist. If there are topics or questions you'd like us to address, please let us know at our website, www.fostergrp.com, and click on the words Financial Perspectives. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, you can help us spread the message of educated optimism by liking us on your podcast app. As always, thanks for investing some of your time and attention with us today. The previous presentation by Foster Group was intended for general information purposes only. No portion of the presentation serves as the receipt of, or as a substitute for, personalized investment advice from Foster Group or any other investment professional of your choosing. Different types of investments involve varying degrees of risk, and it should not be assumed that future performance of any specific investment or investment strategy, or any non-investment related or planning services, discussion, or content, will be profitable, be suitable for your portfolio or individual situation, or prove successful. Foster Group is neither a law firm nor accounting firm, 
and no portion of its services should be construed as legal or accounting advice. No portion of the content should be construed by a client or prospective client as a guarantee that he or she will experience a certain level of results if Foster Group is engaged, or continues to be engaged, to provide investment advisory services. A copy of Foster Group's current written disclosure brochure discussing our advisory services and fees is available upon request or at www.fostergrp.com disclosures.